Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and today is all about installing and configuring UEV, which stands for uh, User Experience Virtualization. It's a Microsoft product. So let's get started. So I'm using Hyper-V Manager right now to virtualize my entire uh, lab. Uh, I highlighted the four machines that I'm going to be using. I added one more machine, which is uh, User 2. User 1 is basically uh, the users logging in, their uh, window settings and the app settings are captured. And then if they log into another machine, which is going to be user 2, at the end of the video, you guys are going to see user 2. Uh, their settings that they did on the first machine is going to copy over to the new machine. Right, first machine, new machine. Yeah, uh, we have a domain controller which we are going to push out a, a couple of group policies. We have a file share, which the file share is used to store the user data, as well as our user experience virtualization templates. So I'm using a file share to store two things: user data, the UEV templates, and then last but not least, uh, we have a V UEV machine. That is the machine that I am going to customize apps within my environment, uh, you know, create a couple of settings, create templates, and then I'm able to push it out to my users. Now, for this video, we're going to focus only for the Windows settings, and then hopefully on the next video, we will focus on the app settings. All right, so let's get started. Right now, I'm on the desktop of my file share. I am going to open up the server manager, and within server manager, I have the basic features for file storage. Hopefully you guys know how to do that. So within server manager, I'm going to go to file storage services shared and I need to create a couple of shares. So I'm going to click on to create a file share, start the new share wizard. So click on that, get a nice little wizard. I am going to do an SMB share quick. Next here, I'm going to leave everything as the default next. I'm going to give the share a name and it's going to be user data. Again, this is up to you. You give it whatever you want. And then I'm going to click next. Uh, I'm going to allow caching for this particular share. Next. Uh, for permissions, I am going to click customize the permissions. And from here, I'm going to, I'm going to click on add. Uh, click on select a principle. And I am going to provide a group. Now this group, make sure that you add the users into it to have access to this particular share and again this share is going to be user data so most likely is going to be all the users within your infrastructure i provided a group name give me access clicked ok and for the basic permissions i gave modified and write click ok apply it click ok and then click on next and then click on create and then done Right, so that's my user data. The next one is the UEV templates. It's the same approach. I did a SMB quick, same process, same stuff. Make sure you give it the correct permissions. Uh, and that's it. I think later on on the video, I created another share behind the scenes, and that is to um, copy the agent into the folder because uh, it made it made life easy for me rather than always mounting the ISO for the UEV stuff. Uh, if I just copy like the installation files on a share, I'm able to go inside that share on a network machine and just grab it rather than mounting constantly that ISO file to grab those files. Now, the next thing that I did is I went inside my Hyper-V manager and I'm going to right click on my, uh, this has to be your golden image. This machine has to be the same image as all your machines on the floor because when you customize it or when you install software and you make modifications, you want a clean build. So you want to take a snapshot for Hyper-V is a checkpoint. So I did a checkpoint, stabled, doesn't have anything in it because I'm going to start installing applications into it. And I need to capture all that information. And when I make modifications within the applications, I'm going to capture that stuff. Then I'm going to capture it as a template, as a UEV template, and then push it out to my users. So once that checkpoint is done, I want to double click on it. I mounted the ISO of the M dot. It's 2015. That's the version that I'm using, right? Once I open up the ISO, I copied and paste that UEV folder to the desktop. Now, this is the mistake that I made. Uh, and I, I kind of fixed it throughout the video. That UEV folder within the ISO, I actually, like I said before, I created an additional share and I dropped that file inside the shared. 
So when I needed those files, I just went inside the network share folder and just retrieve them. So rather than constantly mounting that ISO file within each virtual machine in the main copies, I did it that route. All right, do a network share. It's, it's much easier. So once the copy is done, I double click on the folder and I want to deploy the 2.1 service pack one. So I double click on that, go inside installer. You have multiple flavors and I clicked on any CPU. And again, this is our template machine. This is where we're going to do our customizations, grab the template and then push it out to our machines on the floor. We're going to select tools set up, right click on it, run it as an administrator, click next here, accept the license and terms, next, uh, pick your flavor. I think I did use Microsoft updates, best practice, click next. I said, do not join the program at this time. Next again, install. It's going to do its thing. Once it's completed, click on finish and you're done. You could do a reboot if you want. That's up to you. But if you click on start and you locate the Microsoft user experience folder, expand it and then click on your new app. It's going to launch up. Now, if you want, you could take an additional snapshot of this machine. You have a snapshot without the client and then you have another snapshot with the client. So next thing that we need to do is click on start, locate your Windows administrative tools folder, expand it, locate your group policy management. We're going to expand our domain controller. And from there, I'm going to select group policy objects, right click on it and then click on new. And then from here, let's give our new policy a name. So I gave it U dash EV settings. Click OK. We're going to right click on our new GPO, click on edit. And it's going to open up. Now the settings for your UEV is located within computer configuration, policies, and administrative templates. Expand that. Go inside Windows components. You're going to see Microsoft user experience virtualization. So click on it. From there, you're going to see a lot of GPO options. I'm going to give you guys the basics, but it really depends on how you are going to set up your environment. Now the first one that I'm going to select is uh, storage path. So double click on it. Enable it and give your path. Now this path is your user data. Now there's two ways to do it. You can either uh, specify the username variable or the computer name. I went with the username route. Okay, so that's the reason I have backslash backslash v file share backslash user data, which was that folder that we created within our file share forward slash percent username percent. So that means when the person logs in and makes modifications within their Windows settings, there's going to be a folder within that file share with their name and with their settings. The next one that we need to do is we need to um, specify the template path. So click on settings, template catalog path, double click on it, enable it and give it the path, your file share. Click OK. Next one that we need to change is enable UEV. Double click on that. Enable that. Apply it and OK. It. The next one, the next GPO is use user experience virtualization. So double click on that, enable it and then press OK. And the last one is synchronize Windows settings. If you enable this GPO, it's going to disable that option within the client. So you're controlling everything within GPO. OK, so I double clicked on it enable it and I checked off the options that I want to uh, control within GPO. If you do not enable this GPO, the client is going to show all that stuff and then the user is able to check what they want on the client side. If you do not want the client to have access to that part within the client, do it through GPO and I'm going to show you guys so don't worry about it. Now, I logged into my user account. I don't have the client. There's a couple ways that you could deploy the client. You could do a GPO or if you're using SCCM, push it out that way. Or you have other ways to push out applications to your users. Do it that route. I'm going to open up the Windows Explorer. I'm going to go inside my file share. Like I said before, I got a little smart and I created a folder called agent. And within agent, I have all the files that I need to get. And if I go inside the installer and I go inside any CPU, I'm going to select agent setup, right click on it and run it as an administrator. You're going to get the wizard. So click on next, accept the license and terms, click on next, uh, pick use Microsoft updates, 
That's the best practice. Click on next. I'm not going to join the program at this time. So click next there. And the storage location is going to be the following with that percent username percent and then also specify the template path. Click next there. Install. It's going to start installing. Click on finish. And one of the things about this client or this agent is that you need to do a restart. So make sure that you're pushing this client out after five o'clock after working hours because your machine needs to reboot. So once it reboots, you're able to log in. And once you log in on the lower right hand side of the taskbar where the time is at, you're going to see a nice little icon. The icon looks like a drone. So if you double click on it, uh, you're going to see this. It's going to say settings sync enabled, which is a good thing. And you are able to click close. Uh, status of the sync is going to be on green. Good to go. If you click on application settings, you're going to see all the apps that are going to uh, be enabled by default to sync. Right. You are able to control this through GPO, uh, meaning that on the GPO, you're able to say uh, enable. And then this right, this right here on the client side will disappear and the user will not be able to change any of these modifications. OK. Now for the Windows setting, because the GPO on this machine did not hit. Eventually it will hit and then the window settings will disappear. I won't have that option right now. I do have that option. OK, these are the window settings by default is going to sync throughout the user's account. Now, on this account, on this virtual machine V user, I made a couple of modifications. Uh, I moved the taskbar to the left hand side and I was kind of silly because I wasn't really thinking. I made the XPS document writer printer my default. That setting won't change because I didn't pay attention is network settings, network printers. If it was a network printer, it changes what it went through. The only thing that's going to travel is that setting that I made with the taskbar because that's a desktop setting. I clicked on sync now and it's going to start syncing. You're going to get a nice little tool tip stating that you need to log off, log back on. And then on the file share, when you go to the file share, you go to user data. Remember, we gave it the parameter of percent username percent. So whatever account you're logged into that machine, you're going to see your folder. Awesome, right? Now I logged into user two, right? Install the client. And on that account, on user two, the GPO hit that machine right away because it was a fresh machine. I logged into that administrative account. And as you can see on the Windows setting, I don't have anything in it. Everything has disappeared because I have GPO enabled to control the Windows settings and also the app setting. Automatically, you should see that your taskbar, which the changes that I made on the user VM, automatically went to the left side. So that's awesome. And that's it, guys. I'm going to stop here. Uh, I think on the next video, I'm going to follow up and show you guys how to capture app settings and create templates within the UEV environment. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Leave comments right below. Don't forget about hitting that like button. Share out the video and subscribe. And I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.